of Mark Burford. Yes. Uh, you are a member of the Berks County Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? How long have you been playing music? I um, started playing when I was five. Wow. Um, I'm a fourth generation musician out of the families. Um, it's just something that's in our blood, in the family. Because um, my uncles were all musicians. Uh, they played during the, uh, the bebop, hard bop era. Mm -hmm. uh, my aunt sang opera. She sang at the Mets. Oh, wow. Um, oh, all my uncles, they played the uh, upright bass. They uh, sang. My grandmother sang in some of the biggest churches around. Mm -hmm. And it just rubbed off on me. So um, it would be like a Sunday afternoon. All the uncles would come over and they'd start playing. My uncle was a ragtime piano player. So, so I'd hear all of it, and I'd sit on the steps and just listen, you know. Next thing I know, my mom was shipping me off to music lessons. And so I used to go to Shirelli Brothers, if you remember that, at 4th and Penn. I studied there for maybe 10 years, and I went to Zezwitz for two years. And then I wound up at Why Missing Institute mm -hmm. of Fine Arts for about two years studying uh, theory. And then I got bit by the um the jazz bug and I ran into a lot of good musicians like um uh, like Jimmy Smith ran into him he's the one that got people started playing on the Hammond organ. Um mm -hmm. uh, Al Gray, he was a world renowned trombonist. As a matter of fact his brother just passed they lived here in Reading. He was from Pottstown. Um had long conversations with Buddy Guy. And let me show you this here. This is Robert Johnson. Mm -hmm. And I had B.B. King sign the back of it. Fantastic. And to show the authenticity of it, that's the picture of me, him signing it. Wow, look at that. So this is Robert Johnson, and he's considered the king of Delta Blues, um, grandfather of rock and roll, and one of the greatest blues guys that ever lived. Uh -huh. And he was born in 1911. Uh-huh. So, and actually there's his signature. So. That is fantastic. So this sure to be worth a couple of bucks in a few sure. years. <laughs> if it ain't worth anybody now, you know. What instruments do you play? Um, I studied classical piano in my younger days, but I wound up mostly on the Hammond organ. I played the flute a little bit, but um, I just got into playing the Hammond organ. Mm -hmm. And um, I played with Frank Scott. I sat in with... Um, group called Jay and the Techniques back in the day, and they asked me to go to London with them. And my mom said, you ain't going anywhere, boy. Because <laughs> I was 16 at the time, that's when everything was starting to happen, uh -huh. you know, and she said, no, 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 so, yeah, you know, wound up working on the railroad as an oh, wow. electrical inspector. Uh -huh. I just played a long time with a lot of groups, and then I just wound up saying, oh, I had enough of this, you know. And so I need a real job with some benefits, you know, because <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, music's great, but you need the benefits. Mm -hmm. You got to put food on the table, and, you know, all of a sudden, uh, a girl bit me, and that was it, you know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and I wound up got married and had a family, you know, I had to do the right thing, you know. Uh -huh. I wound up volunteer for the Berks Arts Council as their uh, head of technical support okay. for 27 years. Mm -hmm. And that... Uh, entail of producing all the electrical power that the audio and lighting need. Mm -hmm. needed. So I got to learn a lot about lighting, a lot about audio over those 27 Fantastic. years. Fantastic. So I met many, many a musician. Mm -hmm. you know, it was a great trip, and I just turned that power over to two other gentlemen because um, <clears throat> it was wearing me down mm -hmm. you know, 27 years. It's a long time. That is a long yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like you've contributed a lot to Berks County's music scene. Oh, I stay behind the scenes. I keep myself mm -hmm. known as anonymous efficiency. You know. Uh huh. I got heavily into the Masonic Order, and that's what's really uh, taking me mm -hmm. around the place and you know different parts of the country. So, hmm. you know, I'm in a lot of different parts of the Masonic Order. It's not just what they say to Freemasons. It's other factions that are involved. 
I finally reached the highest pinnacle of 33rd degree Mason. So that's quite an achievement. I worked for MedEd for 27 years. Oh, wow. As a electrical construction and maintenance and also an instructor for substations. Mm -hmm. So I taught a lot of apprentices about uh, powering substations and mm -hmm. the repairs and maintenance and things like that. So got married, had some kids. Uh, but involved, still involves around a lot of music. Mm -hmm. So, but... Um, I just am amazed at all the musicians that are Masons. Like um, some of my favorites were like Mozart, Bach, Beethoven, Haydn, Sibelius, wow. Liszt, Mendelssohn, and Masons uh, that were musicians. And well, a lot of them are dead now, but they're in the last hundred years. Were like Louis Armstrong, Nat King Cole, Fats Waller, Duke Ellington, John Philip Sousa. Al Gray, Lionel Hampton, I had a long talk with him. Hmm. Count Basie, Irving Berlin, that's just to mention a few. And, uh, oh, I did not know that. Oh, yeah. That's because um, music is one of the uh, factors, which is uh, we consider one of the seven liberal arts. Okay. So, and we teach it that music teaches the art of forming concord so as to compose through life of harmonies by mathematical and proportional arrangements of acute, grave, and mixed sounds. This art by a series of experiments is reduced to a demonstrative science with the respect to tones and intervals of sound. Wow. And that's what music is. Now, if they can comprehend that, mm -hmm. they're on the move. Do you have any influences, any any musicians or um, groups or you know particular genres that you feel really influenced your work as a musician? <laughs> My uncles. Because, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. um... Let's see. Well, Jimmy Smith was one. Don Patterson. Virgil Fox. Mm -hmm. um, oh, there's so many of them. Like all the classical guys. Sure. Because that's what I started out this, uh, in Schubert. That's what uh, my teacher would stress to me all the time. He said, I'll give you a little Beethoven now. She liked Schubert and Mendelssohn, so that's what I had to study. Uh, so they, they were influences to me. And then when I found out they were Masons, then I just went ballistic. And oh my gosh, these guys are really something else. Mm -hmm. So they wrote a lot of the music we hear today. Mm -hmm. you know. So you're really part of this like longer tradition mm -hmm. of uh, Masons and music. And yes, yeah, that's really. Yes, because there was, that was just you know to touch on just a little bit of the musicians of that time period. Mm -hmm. And the one thing we all have in common, we all went through the same initiation. Mm -hmm. So if they would come back today, I could sit here and have the same conversation. Sure. You know, I mean, you know, like Pythagoras was a Mason. Mm -hmm. That goes back a long time. Mm -hmm. Socrates was a Mason. Yeah. You know, all these, you know, men of brilliance. So it just inspired me more and more to get more into the music. Mm -hmm. so, that's, that's how that came about. And like I said, it was mostly behind my uncles coming over on Sunday with dinner cooking, a glass of that yellow amber bread, mm -hmm. and my uncles just playing and musicians coming into the house. And they had the whole street rocking, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that's that really just had me going. I said, I got to get in the band. And my mom and dad went out and bought me an organ. And I finally said, well, I think you're going to have to take this thing out of the house, Mom. He said, don't you scratch that thing up. And I had tons of scratches on there after I was done with it. Uh -huh. But um, I love playing the Hammond organ. You know, wow, what and, a rich, fantastic history you have. Oh, my. <laughs> my uncles would come over. My uncle could play the trumpet like you would not believe. <laughs> and uh, my aunt could sing. I thought the glass was going to break Get those high notes, you know, and, and the other uncle's playing the upright bass, the other one's playing the piano, and I'm just sitting here, just listening. I said, how do these guys do this stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. I said, it takes a lot of practice, son, a lot of practice, patience. I said, okay, all right. So they instilled that into me, so I got the patience, and I followed through. 
I've tried to teach my children, but mm-hmm. they're more into the technology, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, they can sit there and spin something, go make some kind of racket, you know. <laughs> I said, the thing is, get here and play and get your hands on the keyboards, you know. So they tried it for a little bit, and uh, they just gave it up. So, mm-hmm. so I, don't, I don't know what the kids are going to do with playing real music today because you can sample everything today, you know. Mm-hmm. But there's still some good kids out there that can play. Hmm. You know, I admire them. And I'll stand behind them 100%. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for sharing your history with us. We really appreciate sure. all that you've contributed to Berks County's mu- music scene. And um, we're just thankful that we could you know, share that history with, with the community here. Yes, because um, there's a lot of good musicians in this community. Mm. And... You just got to find, like, Mike Anderson. I know Mike since phew, almost day one. Mm-hmm. Fred, I know him. You know, you know a lot of guys you got up there on the wall there. So um, ho- hopefully I'll see him in August. Yep. So, yep. So I guess it's been great. Yeah. Um, I appreciate the uh, opportunity to come out here and really well. Uh, give me a chance to tell what's going on. Yeah, thank you so much. So. Okay. All right. Great. <laughs>